I feel like a brand new woman. But um, yeah, I am here today. That's not why did I just even act like I was going to start it off like that. So dumb. All right, let me try this again. Hey guys, welcome back to another Gimpy's Gal Guesses. This is one that Gimpy in particular has been so ready for. Um, I was just asking him a few questions before I started filming. Um, nothing about the game itself, but just about it, it is a Kickstarter or it was a Kickstarter. And um, there was a game that he had been showing me and, and he had been showing Little Gimpy, aka Bradley, um, our son. Um, pictures of this game that it looks so cool and um, he couldn't wait for it to come in so he could share it with Bradley and Bradley's really getting into um, gaming and even though he's not nearly old enough to play most of these games there's a game on the computer that Gimpy plays uh, World of Warships and Bradley loves watching him play that so this one is uh, U Boot so having to do with ships is right up Bradley's alley so he's been waiting on this one for a while now the thing with this, and I'm sure he'll get into it more whenever he actually gets it on the table, which it's going to be today, um, and starts playing with it and kind of giving you guys the rundown on it. But this, like I said, it was a Kickstarter, and he said he backed it like over a year ago. And I know that with, I don't know a lot about Kickstarter, especially not when it comes to gaming, but um, I know obviously that they need backers in order to produce it. That's kind of the whole point of Kickstarter. So you're going to back a game and you might not get it for a while. Um, there's been games that he has backed, and it's been a year, two years before he's gotten it. So this one, apparently it was released like in March, though, and it was sent to Europe first. I don't know if it was printed there, if it's printed here. I don't know where it's printed, but I know that there was a kind of an issue with shipping, and it was being sent to Europe and to overseas before here, and it literally just arrived today about an hour ago, and the only reason... Gimpy even knew that this one was coming in the mail today is because he had to hunt down his tracking and shipping information. So he was never even notified of a shipping delay. He was never notified when it was finally shipped and when it would be arriving. He had to kind of do that on his own. So I'm sure he'll give you his two cents on that, but meh, not the greatest way to start something as far as a Kickstarter type of thing goes, um, especially if the game's printed here. Like, Usually the U.S. gets things, um, especially if it's printed in the U.S. or in Canada, they're going to get it first. So he was a little frustrated, but it's here. So let's get into it before I ramble on all night or all day. So it says Arthur, Arthur, not Arthur, Arthur Saw Wardowski and then Bartos Pluta, Pluta. I don't know what that is. That's names. I don't know. And it says you boot the board game. Um... A real-time app-driven tabletop submarine simulator. So that probably right there is my Gimpy Scout guesses. So I don't even need to open it because it says right here, a real-time app-driven tabletop submarine simulator. That's a tongue twister, but that's what this is. Um, I guess this Iron Wolf Studio is the publisher, if I'm wrong, because there's also Phil Philanix. So I don't know. Hopefully we'll figure it out when we, when we get into it a little deeper. But let me um, try to get this plastic off. Okay, so like I said, it just came in today like an hour ago. Um, he has been so excited. So he's like, this game is coming tomorrow. Be ready to film. As soon as it gets here, you're filming it because he can't wait to get into it. So I'm actually getting to get my hands on it before he is. Be jealous. That's the perfect game. Give these guys. Okay, here's the front. It's a very nice box. Like, I love the matte finishes on these kind of games. I love, like, a matte finish. It's really cool looking. So there's the front. On the back, while you're admiring the front artwork, which, by the way, um, it looks very realistic. It's very dark. Um, yeah, I love I love dark stuff. Um, obviously, I love my colors and my sparkles and my glitters, too. But I do like, you know, horror movies and mysteries and things like that. So I, I can appreciate, like, a dark theme and I like that so on the back it says you boot the board game um all right so main game features it says open world real-time gameplay um it says there is a 3d app or 3d app graphics featuring a gyroscope enhanced first person view um there is an unprecedented realism and historical accuracy to this game never before seen level of immersion Four completely asymmetrical roles, uh, unforgiving and adaptive, adaptive enemy, uh, A1 or AI, I don't know, AI, so 
the, like, you could play it solo, I'm guessing. Um, and then it just kind of talks about the game. Um, I don't see a contents. Usually some of these games will have that. This one does not have that on the back, but it just says, like, an example of gameplay. So what caught my eye when he was just, like, showing me this, or I guess it caught Bradley's eye, I didn't really see it. He doesn't talk to me about the ones I'm going to guess. But he was showing um, Bradley, and so he showed me this picture, but it looks like this. Um, if you can see on the back, it, there's like an actual U-boot or boat, whatever it's called, on the like in the game. So we're going to take a look at it here in a second. But that looks really cool. It's 3D. Um, it's an app-driven game. So if none of you are familiar with it, I don't know if there's any other war games that are app-driven. But um, one or two that Gimpy and I have played were Descent, which is, um, I don't know what that's called. It's like a role-playing fantasy type of game. There's like missions and things. And then we also played, um, oh, what was that game called? It was like a Western theme, but it had like monsters and aliens and things in it. That was also um, accompanied with an app. It wasn't necessarily driven by the app. So I think that's cool. I think it's cool that they're starting to get into that, but I don't want to see too much of that. And I don't know if Gimpy does, because then it gets away from the board game part of it, and then it becomes a video game. So if it's assisted with one, like this one looks like you're still playing it and it looks very interactive. It looks very fun and it looks like something that could catch the attention of someone who's a little younger, maybe who's not as easily amused by board games. This is a good one to get started from the looks of it because it just looks very interactive and it makes you feel like you're actually in it. So I really do like that. I just don't want to see like games in the future go too digital because then it's not a board game. So anyway, let's open it up here. So like I said, I'm still not clear if Iron Wolf Studio or Phalanx who is the publisher? I don't know. Okay, look at this. On the bottom of the top of the box, we have our contents. So it says, um, the app is free, I guess, so you can get the app free. Um, it says www.ubootheboardgame.com. I'm sure Gimby will put that in his video for this. So you can find the website and find the app. So it's one to four players, 14 and up. 60 minute is like the minimum time play, I guess. It says 60 plus. Um, game components, we have a 90 centimeter long cardboard U-boat model, a 3D game board in 172 scale, um, 16 plastic sailor figures in this 172nd scale, um, one plastic 88 millimeter gun miniature, one plastic 20 millimeter gun, or I guess that's what the MM stands for. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Um, one plastic conning tower piece. 13 plastic ship tokens. So you have one U-boat, four escorts, four merchants, two small vessels, one enemy marker, one convoy marker, two plastic order tokens. Um, and then we have a rule book and tactical guide. We have cardboard attack disc. Four player A charts, four cardboard player panels, four cardboard crew tiles, 108 cards, 282 cardboard counters and markers, um, including a ruler and a protractor, cloth bag and a pencil, and then 12 paper sheets. Um, it says strategic maps, identification sheet, enigma code sheet, and captain's log chart. So that's what comes in it, and that's on the... Like, if your game is sitting here, it's going to be on this kind of front panel of the top part of the box. So, it does have it on there. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So, this is a tactical guide. It, it's very clearly marked. We'll go through all of it in detail. I'm just pulling it out. There is the rule book. Pretty thick, but it feels nice. Here it looks like our papers and our guides and everything. Um, here are our little plastic miniature pieces. Um, here are some of the cards, I take it, and there's the cloth bag and the pencils inside that. Some extra baggies, which is always nice, especially when you have that many counters or that many cards. Um, this looks like the roller, I'm assuming, or something like that. Some more cards, part of the ship, I'm assuming, pieces to probably put the ship together. That's just trash. Um... This looks like, what do we have here? Um, some type of player aid thing. I don't know if there's multiple, there's a few different ones of these, but they're kind of different. So we'll just have to go through those. There's another one of those. Okay, 
two more of these because it's up to four players. So I guess that's what that's for. Those, and then we have a protractor here. These two pieces popped out of that, but that is the protractor. We'll set that right there. And then these look like um, parts of the boat because it's going to be a 3D model. So that's so cool. I have to take a second and say, this is one I've not like anything I've ever seen before um, in doing my guesses or seeing Gimpy play before. So I'm sure that's why he's so excited about it. But being that there's already an app that's involved with it makes it more immersive. And then having the 3D element of the actual U-boat that's on the table in front of you. And it looks like from the back, I'll show you in just a second on the back of the box, you can see where they put the people, like the different sailors and the different parts of the boat. So it really does look kind of cool. And I bet Bradley really is going to enjoy watching Gimpy play. He won't really be able to participate much, but I'm sure he'll enjoy watching him play. Now, this... <laughs> isn't a problem, but um, they popped out in the box. So that's just the piece that was holding the other boat pieces. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. <laughs> here's some more of the pieces here. And then here's all the ones that popped out. I'm not gonna attempt to put this together, um, but I'm just kind of showing you, and I wanna show you the back of the box a little closer. So if you can see there how they've got like the boat, it's like a boat, it's like a model and it's like an open model. So you can see inside of it and you can see how they have like the sailors and the different parts of the ship. I just think that's really, really neat. So I'm going to put these pieces back inside of that though. So we don't lose anything. These are just the pieces of the actual U-boat that you are going to build and have on your map or on your table while you're playing the game. So I'm just going to try to put those pieces back in so we don't miss any of those. And then the protractor. So I don't know what this is going to be used for, another piece, um, but it comes with it. And then these two popped out. So we have course, so this looks like something to do with um, navigation. And then this says contact course, and this one says U-boot course. So they were like that, and they popped out, but these look like something to do with tracking and moving, maneuvering your ship, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm going to set those back in there because there's just so much out, I don't want to get confused here. All right, so put this stuff here. Here is the protractor. So this is the protractor, not those. Those are course navigating things. So there's the counters. Yeah. So we'll look at those here in a second. And I'm just trying to get some stuff off the table so I'm not creating a huge mess or losing anything or getting anything mixed up. Okay, so these look like the papers that said there was like 12 um, there's some maps, look pretty much like they're all the same. Um, they have like grids on them, lots of numbers. Um, here's the Enigma code sheet. And is that what all of that is? Number three, yeah. So one, two, three, and four. That's the Enigma code sheet. So you have these two sheets here. Then we have the identification sheet. So I guess it's telling you kind of what each just take this off, um, boat is, maybe. I don't want to mess it up. Okay. So we have the Enigma sheet here, which is these two. They are front and back. This is super confusing. It just says a bunch of numbers and letters, and then it says date and key. And there's one, two, three, four of those little columns. And so there's date and then key, and there's four of those. Don't know what that is. Don't know what Geheim is or Nerfer Din Dengenbrock. I don't know. Uva, if you're watching this, can you translate for us? Uva speaks German. We talked about that in our WBC um, video. But this is the identification sheet. So it looks like there is two of these. They look the same from what I can see. So it's look, it looks like it's like something to do with maybe the scale of the boat, like the little model and what it is, um, but that's what it looks like. So that is the, I don't know, that's one side of it. Yeah, they look like the, it's exactly the same. And then that is the other side. So there's two of those front and back. Stick that back in there as well. Then we have captain's log, two of those. And you can probably make copies of these. That's why they're in paper, so you can keep reusing them, which is cool, as long as you have a printer. Um, but that is the front of it. it has um, your mission title, your date, captain, first officer, navigator, 
chief engineer, and then we have mission details. So we have date, time, and event. And at the bottom, you have mission results, primary objective, secondary objective, and then total GRT sunk. So I'm guessing how many enemies you took out. Then on the back, we have a key. So it says A for activation, P for, or F for fatigue, W wound, uh, O observation, T is technical condition. And then we have captain, first officer, navigator, and chief engineer. And then there's cards, second watch, first watch, another cards. And then, yeah, so that's, that's the back. And again, he'll go over all this in a little more detail. I kind of just skimmed through it just to kind of give you an idea of what's in it. But also it helps me to piece together what my guess is for it. So I do need to look at all of them, but I don't necessarily have to go through all the details like he will. So if that's what you're here for, then you're in the wrong place. That's what Gimpy's video is going to do. Mine is just to kind of give you a first-hand look at it, to showcase it from a prettier face than Gimpy's, and to kind of just take a guess at it. It's, it's really a lot of fun. I've really gotten to enjoy these. So here are those maps they were talking about. Um, how many are there? One, two, a bunch of them, but they look like this on the front. And then this on the back. Now, one thing that is on the table, um, I'm not going to lift it because he's got it all set up, but I'm sure he'll show you. Um, and it didn't say that it came with it, so I don't know if this was part of the Kickstarter. Maybe if you backed it, this was a perk you got, but it's this nice, um, like, latexy um, map of the ship. Um, I'll just hold it up super quick. i got to move the microphone there just to show you, but it looks like this, and it's very, very big, but... It's very nice material. Like it's not paper, but it's not cardboard. It's kind of like a map. And I guess it has obviously something to do with gameplay. I just don't know, sorry, what it has to do with it. So there is that. And then we have this. So there were several player aid sheets. So this is the setup diagram. This is a player aid sheet right here. So here is the, it says setup diagram, the chief engineer. So this must be the different missions maybe or the different people you can play as. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, on the back, it says chief engineer, order section, requirements, notes, just a whole bunch of different things. Again, I'm not going through all of this in detail. There's a lot of it. So I'll just kind of show it to you. And again, Gimpy will go through all of that. And I promise you, as soon as I'm done filming this, he's probably gonna edit it and get it up. And then he's gonna get it on the table to get a video up for you guys because he's been really excited to get his hands on this. Then we have the navigator, which is the same thing that I just showed you for the chief engineer. It just is the navigator, so it's specific to that. I don't know what that means, if that is the mission itself, if that is the ship that you're playing as, if that is a special ability, um, but there's four of these and they're all different. So there's the, the engineer or the chief engineer, the navigator, um, the first officer, and then the captain. And they're all the same as far as on the front, there's, you know, it says different stats about each one. So they're the same and they're different, but yeah. So this is the captain. I don't know. Again, I, I'm unclear on if this is, this is an objective, if this is like a scenario, if this is a person, I don't know what it is, but these are the player aid cards. Then we have the rule book and here's the tactical guide as well. I'm just going to go ahead and put this back because this is just a pouch and a pencil for you to keep the tokens in, I'm assuming. There's the cards. Um, I'm trying to decide what to look at first because there's so much. So I think these are just pieces to put the 3D ship together. So the rule book and the tactical guide. Let's look at the rule book first because I'm sure it'll tell us what the tactical guide is supposed to be used for. And then we'll look at the other fun stuff. So the rule book, again, it has that same kind of artwork on the front, which I love. On the back, it has the credits. Um, now it has both of these companies. It has Phalanx, I think that's how you would pronounce that, and then Iron Wolf Studio. So I guess maybe they both are publishers. I'm not sure. Gimpy will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. Um, so obviously this is a German game. There's a lot of German kind of sprinkled throughout it. But when you open it up, we have table of contents. And I'm just trying to see if there's any kind of um, helpful hints to me to give me an idea of how to piece this together instead of reading the whole rule book. Um, gameplay overview, how to put together the ship, which is going to come in handy. Um, yeah, it looks like your typical rule. All right, so we're getting into that whole, okay, so this says the captain, 
I guess that's your role. That's a person you're playing as. And then, yeah, it's just in the navigation. So how to navigate. Um, closing comments. Yeah, I don't see like this is how you win or game summary or stop boxes that have become famous with me. So yeah, this looks like just your typical run of the mill um, rule book. It is not just like paper. It's that kind of hard stocky material. And it is pretty thick. It's a, it's a thick one. 51 pages. Um, but I do like it. It has a very nice look too. I really like it. It's very sleek. It's very dark. But it looks, if we flip through it, hopefully you can see um, that it looks kind of pretty easy to follow. Like it just, it doesn't look too confusing. Um, again, I haven't read through it. Give me Will and he'll let you know if I'm right or wrong. But it looks promising. Looks like a rule book should look. So I didn't see anything that stuck out about this tactical guide, so I don't know. Whew, tactical guide. Um, yeah, I didn't see anything in the rule book that referenced to this, so I'm not 100% sure how this is used, but obviously we know that it is. Um, again, table of context, context, contents, introduction, getting started, at sea, friendly unit. So yeah, I guess this is just the tactical guide. Yay. Don't know what that means. Okay. Now we're gonna get into more of the fun stuff. So here we have some cards. Um, these, this one, first one right away, definitely German. It says beer, uh, chocolate, pep talk, reprimand, strategy meeting, uh, authority, gramophone, and book collection. So there's like these cards that look like this on the I, I never know. You guys tell me in the comments below. Do you consider the part that you see? So when the card is laying on the um, table, which we would consider that face down on the table, is this the back of the card or the front of the card? Because I always think I flip flop it on what I say. So I guess to me, this is the face. So I guess face is the front. So face down. So this is the front of the card. Um, that is what those have on them. And then the back looks like that. So let me know, do you consider the face the front or do you consider the back of the card that you see? Like is the part of the card that you see when it's laying on the table, is that the front of the card to you or is the face the front of the card? Just curious. Then we have, let's see, uh, Cook Burns Dinner, which would definitely be me. Um, this one has that geheim on the back of it. And then another one of those geheim cards that says appendicitis, which is no bueno. Assign this card to a random sailor. So it looks like we have some like events that can happen to kind of throw off whatever's going on here. Bad news from the front. Another Gaheem card are all of these. Let's see. These look like weapons. Yeah, those are weapons. These are like uh, alcohol, it looks like. I'll show you in a second. We have some coffee and a pipe here. <laughs> Those are funny. Then we have more of these Geheim cards. So there's the rest of them are Geheim cards. Yep. All right. So these look like some kind of an action card because most of the ones I've seen, like Cookout does himself, Dermatitis, uh, Dysentery, a crew member has a newborn son, fishing, food poisoning. You get the gist. It kind of looks like events, things that happen to you that help or hinder you or can help or hinder another player. Again, it's one to four players. Um, obviously it, Germans are involved and I don't see anything else yet to give me a hint. So we'll have to figure out, um, what the other sides are, but that is these Geheim cards. And then these look like beer or something on this side of them. Um, broken leg, crushed hand, depression. So these are like kind of health related. So that must be medicine on the front of it. Yeah. Looks like some kind of medicine. Get a gripman, turmoil. Yeah, so these are like um, injury, like incident type of cards, I guess. And then these look like weapons, or it has a weapon on this side. And then we have claustrophobia and catatonia. So more bad things that can happen to you. And then these, uh, dislocated finger, head trauma, insomnia, rebuke, sprained ankle. You get the gist. So they all kind of seem like they're different types of um event type of cards, like little things that can happen to you or someone else in the game that can 
mess it up or that can help you hinder them from doing something. But none of them seem like they're very good. Some of them did say you could give it to someone else. I don't know if that means an opponent or if it's someone else that's on your side, like one of your sailors. And then those um, other cards I showed you at the beginning. So that was that first stack of cards. I'm just going to put this back around it and stick it in the box because I will let Gimpy divide it up how he sees fit. And then we have some more cards here. So let's try to separate these. So we have some numbered cards here. And then a few different things here. Is all the rest the same? Nope, even these are a little different. I'm just kind of separating, separating them out so I can show you the different types of cards. Again, he goes more into detail with all this. I'm just kind of trying to help a little bit. All right, so we have some more of those that have like the gun on the back of them. Yeah, um, so those are more of those type of action event cards, whatever you want to call them. These, which look like this on the back or on the front, whichever side you call that. And then on the underside, we have tools, U-boat blueprints, sealing materials, bearings, optics, fuses, gaskets, precision parts. So this looks like it must be something to do with repairing your ship or building your ship, making it better, modifying it. That is my guess with these cards. And then we have these, which have like a skull and a little cross at the top. Um, we have minor poisoning. Minor poisoning, 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 and severe poisoning. So these are poison cards. Um, I guess like an action-y type of card. And then these have bullets with the cross on it. And it says you have a flesh wound, gunshot wound, and fatal wound. So those are different types of wounds you can get in the game. And then these are numbered one to eight. There's two different, but they're not really different. So, okay. We'll just look through them. So we have one through eight. So I'm just gonna put them in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same with these. So yeah, these are numbered one through eight, but there's two different, like two different eights of these or counts of these, whatever. They look like this on the front, just to show you some of them. And then on the back, um, this one says bridge, foredeck, aft torpedo, diesel engine, cruise quarters, control room. Maybe these are like movement cards, like at what point in the game, what part of the ship you're you're at, or what part you have access to, or what part you've built. Um, looks like they're the same, right? Bridge, foredeck, yeah. Yeah, they're the same. There's just two different sets of these, but they're exactly the same. So not sure exactly how those come into play, but... Here we have fire and the little cross things. We have burns, so these are gonna be types of burn injuries. Minor burns, burns, and severe burns. And then the little lightning bolt thing looks like electric shock, minor electric shock, electric shock, and severe electric shock. So yeah, these ones with the kind of green with the cross look like they're kind of injury cards. There's just different types, whether it's poison, a burn, a shot, or electrical it looks like. Some more of those action cards. These were those kind of, looks like it's what you would use to help repair your boat or build your boat. And then these look like they have something to do with some type of gaming sequence. Like, so you're moving through these. There's They're numbered one through eight. Um, if I'm looking on the board, I don't see, no I do. There's one through eight here on this little map thing. So that probably has a lot to do with those cards I showed you. So that was the second set of cards. And let's see. Sorry, that was our school bus, I think. School bus or mailman or construction, who knows? They're still finishing up the houses on our bed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and look at these. These are like the little um, models that come with it, which is so cool because you have a boat that you get to build and it's 3D and then you get to put these little people in it. How exciting. Let me open you. Of course, you have tape and I don't have anything to cut you with. Come on. Okay, here we go. So this looks like parts of the ship 
Oh, I'll get them out. It looks like little, like pl hard plastic pieces that you probably attach to the boat when you're building it. Um, probably more pieces to help with building here. And then we have two little dudes that look like this. And then we have some more. These are like the sailors. So yeah, they're so cute and little. And they have different color bottoms. So there's like, this one has a green bottom. This one has a blue one. This one looks like a zombie or something. There's those. So yeah, there's a bunch of different ones of those, but those are like the little sailors that you're gonna put in your ship, I'm assuming, once you get it built and you're playing the game. So we're almost through with looking at all the pieces and I still don't really know. I mean, like I said, I think at the beginning when I read that it's a real-time app-driven tabletop submarine simulator, that's exactly what it is. So as far as sides go, I know German is one. I can't figure out the other yet. Maybe these last few will help me. So these look like player aid things. Um, I don't remember what they call these. I know they said there was a ruler in here, but I don't think this is a ruler. This has those like different types of characters and they're all different. So there's a green, brown, like a maroon, and then a black. Um, so we have navigator, observer, observer, observer. And then on the back, second watch officer, observer, observer, observer. So that is one of those. So these must be when you're playing, oh, yeah, that, and then that. Um, I guess you pick one of these, depending on what campaign or what scenario you're playing. And this tells you who your characters are. Um, here is the second one, front and back. Don't know which, I'm assuming the side that says second watch is the back of that one, but they don't all have the same on there. Uh, chief engineer. And then on the back we have second engine or senior engineer with mechanics. And this one, and then the last one we have first officer, radio man, helmsman, helmsman. And then we have midshipman, helmsman, helmsman, and radio man, I think, or two radio men. So there is that. Again, more like player aid type of things. And then these look like they're going to help depending on who, who you're playing as, I'm guessing. Or maybe these go around the board. I don't know, but this is what they look like. These look like you can put a little piece. So this will actually be like a working piece. You can see there's two little holes there. So I think there's like an area you can put there that will actually make that work. But this looks like plans. So like maybe this is something to do with building the ship or, or fixing it. That's what that looks like. We have this here, which looks like maybe navigation because there's like telegraph looking thing. And then uh, it says that high end thing. We have like medical. So maybe this has obviously something to do with the game, but I don't know exactly what. This looks like it has to do with those cars that I showed you um, because we have some of those down here, right here. So maybe those are the, this is where you put the cars, but I don't know what all these little spaces at the top, they all have these little circles for counters, I'm assuming, but I don't know. Again, it didn't really specify it. And again, I don't go through the whole rule book, so that would defeat the purpose. And then this one says today's meal, available products and food supplies. This probably has to do with taking care of your sailors and keeping them fed and then keeping them alive so that they can fight for you another day. So these are all um, player aid type of things. Then we're gonna get into the counters and then that's all the components. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now that my guess is that it's exactly what it says on the box. It is a submarine simulator. It does come with an app. So with the app and with the 3D ship, it's very um, interactive. It's very immersive. And so it says, again, a real-time app-driven tabletop submarine simulator. So that's exactly what it is. It says that it's one to four players. I haven't seen any indicator that there's other sides. So maybe you just play as the Germans. Um, and you play through these scenarios and the app is who plays the AI, the other side for you. And you can play as a team or you can play by yourself versus the um, AI. That's my guess. Um, give people let me know if I'm right or wrong. So let's look at these counters really quickly because um, he's like waiting to knock the door down to come and <laughs> get this on the table for you guys. So we have another German word. I'm guessing Kriegsmarine looks like the protractor. And then we have... Some shapes, we have a one, two, three, four, Penta Pentagon, one, two, three, four of those are different colors. There's blue, brown, white, and green, which we did see indicated on these little roller looking things. So that must be the different characters you can play as. Um, and then we have a square, triangle, and circle with all the different colors. And then these skulls, 
These look like the different pieces. Like I said, some of these little double folded boards had like workable pieces that move. And I think that's what these are. Some of these are the movable pieces. Then we have like the different boats. And then on the back is like question marks. Um, and then this is the ruler right here. <laughs> and we have words in a bunch of German words. Works, Gerkharkskin, Verbankskin, Kankskin. I don't know, but... That's one sheet of the counters. That is the front. And that is the back or vice versa. It doesn't say. I don't see anywhere on here which is the front or the back. But I think it's kind of doesn't really matter. They're pretty similar. Then this one is sailors. I'm, I'm assuming it's just front and back. It's the same thing. Um, just a whole bunch of sailors. And then we have some tools. This one popped out here. This is looks like a, a hatch to a submarine. Like the top of a submarine. That's what it looks like. Um, so we have more of the sailors on this side, but on the back of them, there's tools. There's a wrench, two wrenches, three wrenches, binoculars, and crosses. These red ones here are crosses. I don't know what that is, like a guy bent over. Like a poison token. Um, over here, it's H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I don't know what that is because on the back it looks like the plans for the ship, but they look like they come apart. So maybe you have to like find them all and put them in the right order. And then this says mattress on it. So, and they're popping out. But they feel like good quality. Let me hold it this way. Good quality counters. They're not getting stuck because you can see they just kind of pop right out. So definitely I have a good feeling about the counters from what I'm touching them, but... Gibby has a little more experience and opinion on that. And then this is the last sheet. We have some of those burn, electrocution. Then we have water poison, uh, power outage maybe, some sailors, some food, probably first aid, some more of those cross things with these weird people on the front. Um, and yeah, most of these are the same on the back. We have like a target. These, I don't know what that is or that is or that is. That's a light bulb. But yeah, some of them are the same on the back. Some of them have different things. These at the bottom have like, one of them has a scalpel. One of them has pills, an injection, a cast, and then like a medicine looking thing. Then these have food on the back of them. And the rest of them look like they're the same front and back. So that is the last sheet of counters. So quite a lot in this game, which is cool because we know that it is interactive. We know that it, um, I'm just putting all the little pieces in here in case any of them are important. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. I'll say that he was disappointed that it took so long for it to get to him. He was been talking about it for at least a month that I can remember. Um, he, again, not telling me anything about it, just that he can't wait for it to get here and that it was delayed. So that was U-Boot, the board game. Again, with this, the only things that I know for certain is what it says in the box, which is that it is a real-time app-driven tabletop submarine simulator. So there is a free app from what I could tell. And going through all the contents and everything, it is a free app, um, and it looks like you can do it on a laptop, a tablet, or a phone. And there is a U-boat that is three-dimensional that you kind of build up. Um, there is this cool vinyl map that I also showed you, and I don't know, this was not listed, I don't believe, on the contents. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that was something that was just with the Kickstarters, or if it just wasn't listed, but it's part of it. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that comes in here. I'll say again, it's got a nice matte finish on the box. I really like the box. Everything feels really good quality. Everything feels nicely made. Nothing feels like they cheaped out on anything. Now, there are a lot of paper maps and paper um, player aid type of things that you're going to use. But I think they do that so you can make copies of them. And you can, you know, you don't have to not write on them. You can write on them and make a copy of it so you can continue to use it. Um, and then any of the player aid actual cardboard cards, they're very sturdy, very nice material. So as far as... The aesthetics of this game, though, I think it looks really cool. It looks very interesting, very dark. The boat looks so awesome on the back here. I'll show you again. It just looks like with this app pulled up here, it looks very, very immersive. It makes me feel like if you're playing it, you're really in it. And for Bradley, he would just love to watch that. So um, I know he's excited to get this. I know that he wanted me to film this right away so he could get it on the table. I don't know his schedule. I don't know what he has 
He has a lot of projects that he's working on at once, so he tries to get things up as they come, but he has certain things he has to do in certain orders, so be patient. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know it wasn't really much of a guess, it was more of just kind of showing you the game um, because it kind of gave it away on the front. And like I said, if I'm guessing who, I'm gonna guess the Germans, and if I'm guessing when, uh, let's see if they'll tell me, World War II, so that's when. Um, yeah, that's that's my guess. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you will tune in for when Gimby gets it on the table. Um, if you guys backed it or kickstarted it, let us know in the comments. Or if you're interested in it after seeing me unbox it or after seeing him play, always give us that feedback because we really love to hear from you guys when you get a game because of something that we recommended or because of one of our videos. It's really rewarding, especially for Gimpy with as hard as he works on this. So definitely leave those comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'm sure I will see you guys very, very soon. If not, um, I am 30 weeks pregnant, so we're on the countdown now. So really, in about five or six weeks, it could be any time that we go for baby. So as the time nears or draws nearer, we will let you know. But um, yeah, I'm super excited to get, let him get this on the table and see what Bradley thinks about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy watching him do the playthrough of it. So we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.